So the narrative of black people in the United States was, you know, you came from these primitive, savage people who had no history, and everything you are, we made you. Strip the African of his knowledge of himself. You can then replace that knowledge with any falsification of consciousness you desire. Once you take from me my knowledge of myself, you can then tell me those lies. I am not black. In the early years of the 20th century, it's recorded that there were churches that actually put light pieces of pine wood at the entrance to the church. And they had fine combs, and they said, if your skin is not lighter than this wood, and the comb cannot pass easily through your hair, then you are not eligible to enter this church for communion with the Lord. It's also recorded that there are religions that say people are born into a caste of untouchables, and they are considered the lowest and most despicable element of society, and there is no way for them to elevate from that level within their lifetime. It's recorded that there are religions that say that there is a race of people that are the chosen ones, and others cannot be the chosen people of God if they were not born into that race or ethnicity. Racism, as we can see past and present, is something that was institutionalized and became systemic and is an epidemic that unfortunately we are still plagued by today. We consider ourselves advanced societies and civilized people, and yet we find that there is a strong resurgence of this disease in our modern times. We find that hate crimes are on the rise in a number of developed nations, and this is something which is unacceptable. Today I will share with you the Islamic solution to this ugly disease and the Islamic perspective on racism. Throughout history, people illogically try to persuade themselves that they are superior to others, sometimes claiming that they were physically stronger or that they were more intelligent or that they were superior due to their lineage and their family. Oftentimes this was done based on color or race and this is blatant racism. Now when we talk about race, you have this ism going on, racism, you know, socialism, capitalism, liberalism. This ism actually is just feeling. Now let me share with you what God Almighty Allah, the Creator, said about race. In the Holy Quran, the final revelation that was revealed by Allah to confirm what was revealed early in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Torah and the Injil. Allah said, Ya ayuhannas, O people, O mankind, Inna khalaqnakum min zakarin wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. Now Allah is telling us that our nature, that all of us, Allah is addressing, reminding fellow mankind, you and me, whether you are Muslim, you are not yet Muslim, as long we are human being, Allah is talking to us. O people, O mankind, indeed we, Allah, the Creator, who have created all of you from one male and one female, Adam and Eve. Then Allah said, and we make you into nation and tribes, race. Allah again remind us, in the beginning of the creation, there's no race. There's only Adam and Eve and the children of Adam. We are like one big family. We are all children of Adam. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Nasu min Adam wa Adamu min Turab. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that people are from Adam. And Adam happens to be from dirt. 
لا فضل لعربي على أعجمي. He continued and he said there is no virtue that an Arab person has over a non-Arab person. Likewise, there is no virtue that a white person has over a black person and vice versa. إلا بالتقوى. Except if you look at the angle, except if you look at the measure and the index of piety, God consciousness. So in Islam, the only measure of virtue of a person over another that the Prophet ﷺ had described, and also that Allah, Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal, the Lord of the Universe, had described within the Book of God, Quran, is the measure of taqwa, God consciousness. Allah then gives us the correct criteria. What is it that we should use to determine if someone is greater than someone else? What is it that we should use to determine if someone is superior to someone else? Allah says, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ And that is Arabic and it means, indeed the most noble amongst you, the most honorable amongst you, is the one that has the most God consciousness, the most piety, the most righteousness. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in one occasion, he pointed to his heart, to his chest, and he said, At-taqwa He said that piety is here, it's in the heart. It's not something that people can see. And in another narration, Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, informed us that indeed Allah doesn't look at our physical forms. And He doesn't look at the wealth that we possess. It's not about what race we are. It's not about our socioeconomic status. But rather, Allah will look at our hearts. What intentions do we have? What beliefs do we have? And He will look at our deeds, our actions that we do as a result of those good intentions and those beliefs. This is the true criteria and this is a criteria that people cannot use to judge one another because no one knows the amount of goodness that is in another person's heart. Why Allah created so many races and color and languages? Now, Allah Almighty, the All-Wise, no human being will be demanding, will be asking this and that. If Just imagine if Allah created in the ocean only one type of fish, tuna fish. I don't think any one of us will enjoy yeah, eating only tuna fish. But Allah created so many different types of fishes. Crabs, squid, this fish, that fish, mashallah. So that we are given a choice, you know, to, 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 to look at the creation of Allah, to appreciate the creation of Allah, and to understand the creation of Allah, that these differences is not for you to compare, but these differences is for you to appreciate, to be thankful to Allah's creation. So Allah said, I make you into nation and tribe, races, tribe, for what? To fight against each other? To say that I'm white better than the black? I'm Arab better than not Arab? No. Allah Rabbul Alameen said, لِتَعَرَفُ The reason I make you different so that you get to know each other. You complement each other. And Islam is here to provide the equality, the fairness that everybody have the equal rights. Just a few decades later, not too, uh, not too far after the death of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the Prophet Sallallahu had inculcated these meanings within the society, we have a person by the name of Ata ibn Abi Rabah. He was a person who was black in color. He was a person who was one-eyed. He was a person who was snub-nosed. He was a per person who was also partially par paralyzed. He was a person who was also crippled. And later on in his life, Ata also lost his other eye, so that means he became fully blind as well. He was a person of poverty, he didn't have money. He slept in the masjid, in the mosque for 20 years because of the fact that he didn't have money as well. 
He was a person that during the time of Al-Hajjaj, in which he attacked Mecca, attacking Ibn Zubayr, his hand got cut off as well. All of these things that bring social stigma towards a person, the skin color, the way the eyes are, the blindness, the hand being cut off, and all sorts of poverty and so forth, all of these things did not stop him in a society which was nurtured and cultured within the prophetic culture. It, that did not stop him from him becoming a person of value in this society because the Prophet ﷺ said no to discrimination and he taught his followers to do the same thing. He became the Mufti of the Haram. He became the Mufti of Mecca. He became the one who would give the verdicts in the city of Mecca. He became a caller to guidance through giving fatwa in the time in which the largest gatherings of Muslims occur. In Mecca, there would be a caller who would announce at the top of his lungs every single year. He would say no one should give fatwa to the people except for Ata, despite his skin color, despite the money that he has, despite the poverty that he's experiencing, despite the fact that his hands, hand is cut off, despite the fact that he is blind with one eye and then also the other eye later on in his life, a caller calls out to all of the Muslims that gather for Hajj and says no one is to give fatwa to the people except for Ata. This was the culture that the Prophet brought and this was the clear change that the Prophet brought. We have an example in the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him where we find that one of the companions when he wanted to uh, disagree and was in a bit of an argument with another one of the uh, fellow Muslims, he tried to insult him based on his mother and the race that he was from. And that man went and complained to the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him asked him and he was an Arab and he had uh, a noble lineage and he was asked, did you insult him because of his mother and based on who his mother is? He said, yes I did, O Messenger of Allah. He said, then you are a person that still has in him the traits and the attributes and the actions of the people of pre-Islamic ignorance. Meaning, sometimes we are a victim of our upbringing. Unfortunately, human beings love to segregate and love to divide and love to say it's us and them and love to hate others. And we end up raising people upon that, whether it's our own children or the society around us or the education system. And a person becomes tainted with that filth of racism and discrimination. So the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him told him, you have not been fully purified from that. And that means you have to take steps to re-educate yourself and to change your beliefs and your words and your actions to reflect the proper behavior and that is the behavior of someone who does not hate others based on their race or based on their nationality or based on their tribe or their lineage or their origins. So that we love and share things together and we will try our best to make this life in this world a very peaceful yeah, area for us to live on and grow. And if we Muslims believe that Islam is the best of course, Islam is for everybody. So we must not look down upon a person because of his race. When the Quran speaks about race, it speaks about one race, the human race. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدم, And we did indeed honor mankind. The human race is an honored race. And that includes all of the varieties and colors and ethnicities and nationalities and languages and tribes that are amongst mankind. And Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, addressed his followers and his companions in the farewell pilgrimage. And he said, O oh mankind, your God is one and your father is one. There is no distinction for an Arab over a non-Arab nor for a white person over a black person, nor for a black person over a white person, except through piety. And piety again is something that is internal and is something that is related to a person's faith and a person's belief in Allah. Islam is a religion which, which 
came to eradicate racism. Yes, today I admit, and we all admit, that racism is prevalent within a lot of Muslim societies, but it is perhaps the reminiscence of the evils and ills that the colonialists had brought along with them and their culture, because Allah's Messenger وسلم, the Prophet Muhammad came to eradicate racism and discrimination. The Prophet وسلم, quoted in the completion of the hadith which I started off with, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna akramakum Allahi atqakum. The most honorable of you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the ones who are most pious.